Okay, that's the best I can do. And my head is the wrong size, according to this. That doesn't bode well. <laughs> my eyes wonky? Maybe this was a mistake. <laughs> Hello lovely people, my name is Emma, welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new. My voice is bad again, the pollen count has just shot up dramatically. If I look like I'm crying at any point during this video, it's not emotions at the content. Well, I don't think so. I don't think we're touching anything particularly uh, emotional. It's just, it's hay fever. I don't remember now how I found it, but a while ago I found a, uh, a facial attractiveness rating thing, website, tool, whatever, and I thought, you know what, it's been a while since we talked about the old uh, red pill incel crowd. I'm kind of interested in talking about their attractiveness scale, and then maybe we can see what random internet tools say about my face. Even though right now I am red-eyed and snotty, so I <laughs> hope that factors in. I used to peruse Reddit and uh, some of the forums on there and some of the incel related forums. I attempted conversations in the past with people from forums called things like incels without hate and so on. The good thing about doing this now is that the most overt mainstream and the most hateful kind of content in this red pill, black pill area is uh, gone, has been successfully taken down from the internet. Unfortunately, there are a lot of really terrible newsworthy events that kind of triggered that. Say acts of violence where the perpetrator was linked to lots of incel forums, that was a big thing. So the overt hateful kind of side has really died down and quietened down a lot, which is really good. The phenomenon of lonely men, however, is still a thing and something that warrants talking about. So now that the environment is sort of calmer, I think it's a better time to discuss that. There was an article going around recently that was along the lines of, I'm a man in his 30s and I've got no mates. And it was a lot of people were sharing that and saying, yeah, this is pretty common, uh, which is really sad. I've always been fascinated and saddened by the fact that a lot of these forums are uh, dominated or if not dominated, a large portion of uh, people taking part were very young. Clearly, everybody has been impacted by COVID as well. So a lot of problems people were having with loneliness have been really exacerbated because they've not been able to see people. People who were young, people who had their education at whatever level interrupted by COVID are like especially vulnerable to this. Where the incel pathway diverges from normal sort of human loneliness is uh, taking it in a direction that kind of blames society, particularly women, and chiefly blames themselves for things out of their control like how they look, which is what we're talking about today. One of the things I also noticed was that there's very little about women in terms of appearance and things. When I was looking this up, I was like, okay, let's see what it means to be an attractive woman, according to, you know, red pill uh, rhetoric. Of course, red pill covers more than just incels. That's your, your pickup artists and your, you know, Rollo Tomassis and Fresh and Fit and whoever. They are obsessed with analysing the male form. You've all seen Giga Chad, right? This is what the incel male claims is a 10 out of 10, the most conventionally attractive looking man that 99% of women would be attracted to. And I have an interesting little tidbit about that as well. Now, disclaimer, this is just a random survey conducted by somebody online. This isn't anything uh, professional, um, but this guy who was interested in kind of dating stuff, I guess, from date psychology. Sent a survey to a bunch of people um, and their hypothesis was that men would rate the Giga Chad as attractive and women wouldn't, and that turned out to be the case. Most of the women that were surveyed found Giga Chad, the supreme attractive male, according to incels, like, low down on how attractive they find men. Uh, so I thought that was kind of fun and interesting. So the incel belief is that there are objective attractiveness levels. There's no room for deviation in terms of personal preference. Deviation only exists in terms of other values that women want, such as uh, finances and things like that. Um, there's also the concept of settling, which plenty of people do. I don't know what that has to do with the attractiveness scales exactly, but plenty of people settle for relationships that they shouldn't because people are afraid of being single. We have here the incels wiki established in 2018 <laughs> to help us learn more. So this is the decile scale or the decile scale. I've never heard it said out loud. I don't know what the word means or where it comes from. The article doesn't say, but this is the common scale. Whoever made this, congratulations, because this was very viral within incel circles. This is the scale of attractiveness for men and women 
there's no room for anything outside of that. The um, the incel sphere tends to be very uh, transphobic. It's quite a strict gender binary, heteronormative. There's a lot of citation needed moments throughout this article. It does say, rating only looks has several weaknesses. People do agree substantially about the looks of others. However, especially in the mid-range, different raters rank the same individual quite differently depending on their individual preferences. Which is kind of actually true to life and quite nice. Nonetheless, a five will always be in the fifth decile. Basically, especially around the mid-ranges, personal preference does come into play, which is so nice for an incel-based website to actually acknowledge. The moderate kind of incel rhetoric touches so closely to reality that they very often come close to the mark and just sort of like swing by it. There are trends in aesthetic standards in fashion and beauty. They can be changed by certain things. For example, I don't have any data to back this up. This is just speculation. So um, let me know in the comments if you uh, agree with the growing popularity in Hollywood of older actors. Hollywood, typically the, the sexy young folks are in their like 20s and 30s. So at the moment, people like Pedro Pascal are very popular. We've loved George Clooney as he aged. I postulate that that has shifted a perception of the attractiveness of, say, older men. Because of the way these cultural shifts happen, I think that when mainstream movies are all having, are all showcasing, hey, look at this cool, attractive older man, people see that and it becomes normalised and they're like, yeah, grey is the best colour of hair. That was a bit of a weird tangent. The point being that there are these cultural trends, there are these shifts. If you look at periods of uh, the 70s and 80s, where a lot of uh, musicians and pop stars were very gender non-conforming, where more uh, feminine traits in men were uh, considered attractive because they were more mainstream. You had men performing in more makeup and uh, feminine clothes. There are these trends that affect what is popular. So if you asked people to fill in a survey or do a study or something like that. There are trends that would influence that. Here's another external factor then. Plenty of studies over time have shown that couples tend to be genetically similar in more ways than strangers. Quite often it seems that our monkey brains are attracted to similar features that we share. I guess there's an evolutionary argument to be made there. Another external factor that I think is very interesting and I have tried to suggest this fact to people in the uh, incel belief sphere before is that studies also suggest that people become more attractive to you the longer you know them. You know the friends to lovers trope? It's kind of a thing. In my experience that's certainly been the case. The more I know people, the more I like them, the more time we spend together and get to know each other, the more attractive I feel they are. Obviously that's completely arbitrary because nothing changes about them physically. All these things to say, yes there are societal trends, and if you were very meticulous and feelings are not something that interests me, I want to know scientifically what the best shape to be in, you know, the best amount of muscle mass, you know, the best shape to have my eyebrows in, you could live your life by what is currently the most attractive trend that is likely to get women interested in me. You, you could live your life like that, but you ignore all the external factors that impact relationships and attraction. I've just gone off on my own tangent describing the weaknesses in this attractiveness rating system, which is what the article was just doing, so let's see if there's any crossover between our beliefs. Looks are at most only weakly related to other desirable traits. Indeed, some women may prefer a male partner not to be too good looking because they perceive attractive men to be arrogant, egotistical, unfaithful, or otherwise low quality mates. <laughs> I always find the word mates in discussion of human relationships to be quite strange. There's <laughs> something sort of extraterrestrial about it, like I've just beamed down to find a mate because this is how we, I don't know, prolong our species. There's just something weird about it. I find it strange. It is very like, we are just animals with clothes and shoes. I don't know. What I was kind of saying but not saying here is that your personal values and how those are influenced by culture, upbringing, your own past, you know, there's a lot of people who will be like, I won't date a Steven again because I've just been hurt by too many Stevens. You know, that's not like a, there's no science behind that. There's not like a logic that you can apply across all people, like all Stevens are bad. That's just sort of personal history influencing choice there. Again, it's not something you can ever quantify. It kind of makes this, throws the scaling system a little bit out of the window because people's personal history is you know, complicated. A better example would have been like uh, somebody who had a terrible marriage doesn't ever want to be married again, so they're only looking for spouses who don't want to get married. Stuff like that. 
I kind of like the Stephen thing, though. I'm sticking with that. Apologies to Stevens who may be watching. I'm sure you're a gem. That was just a random name I picked as an example. I have never had a problem with a Stephen. Let me just say that. Now, Tom's. Much of this may be virtue signalling due to stigma against those males being seen as shallow. Virtue signalling is a very strange term. I've mostly heard it in this context regarding incels and black pill and uh, generally people who are like anti-woke. Um, although I've heard some people using it outside of that. And it's got context to be a real thing. The idea is that you don't actually care about something. It's like performative activism. Um, you're just trying to seem like you care about the right things, you know, so as to fit in with society or a group or whatever. Rewritten to basically say you may have biases based on cultural standards. Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. Women do take the attractiveness of potential male partners into account when estimating these men's likelihood of being unfaithful. Citation needed? I don't know. This trait is apparently not related to men's propensity to be actually unfaithful. Which I, th I think what they're saying there is that a man being attractive doesn't mean he will be unfaithful. The final weakness of the rating system, according to the Incels Wiki. Looks are also only weakly related to sexual success. Even though in one study, unattractive people of either sex faced a 1.5 to 3 times higher chance of remaining, virgin <laughs> remaining a virgin during early adulthood, all of the 26 very unattractive men in that study did have sex by around age 28. Unattractive based on their rating system, I'm assuming is what that means. <laughs> Hence, it is somewhat misleading to categorise a two as an incel. So I, I guess what they mean is that there were 26 people in this study that, according to this chart, are a two and they had had sex by the time they were 28. I, I, I don't know. There's some visualization of OK Cupid data here. I've said this a couple. We're not going to go into this today because it's not particularly relevant. But I've said this a couple of times. Incels tend to use dating apps and dating websites as um, a, a big source of data, especially Tinder. Those are, and I've tried to point this out before and been met with some resistance. Those websites are deeply skewed. They are almost always. In fact, I don't know of any. Where this isn't the case, they're almost always dominated by women. There are usually way more women than men on those apps, so the data is inherently skewed. I also think in general, and I've talked about this before, I think the uh, the gamification of dating on like apps, thanks to the popularity of Tinder and stuff, where it's just swiping and, and just picking people based on just a flash moment of seeing their face and maybe two words about them, I think that's a bad thing just overall just for dating for people's self-esteem maybe i'm an old fuddy-duddy but i think it's but i think this gamification of relationships is generally not a good thing all right so here's the table broken down at 10 we have the giga chad the female version is the giga stacy which i guess is just the the super attractive the, the most attractive you could be you couldn't couldn't get more attractive then we have at nine chad and stacy chad light and stacy light a seven on the male is a high tier normie. Normie means normal person. Kind of, I, I think it kind of comes from Reddit. Normie tends to be like like a, an average person who is not like on Reddit, who wouldn't be like on these forums or whatever. Seven on female is a high tier Becky, which is interesting. So Becky spans seven to five, with six being a Becky and five being a low tier Becky. See what I mean? There just isn't as much distinction. There isn't as much effort put into analyzing the attractiveness of women as there is into men. Like, I've seen forums dedicated to specific measurements of men's faces. This is exactly the, the down to the millimetre, the best brow a man could have. They just don't do that for women. It's interesting. Um, and you've got Brad and Tanner. I think these are just like stereotypical sort of American dude names that they use for... I, I don't know why that is. It's what they use for, for this rating system. Four is a Melvin aka a low tier normie for on uh, females is gertrude gertrude's a nice name what's wrong with that three is incelish slash failed normie or femcelish two incel slash femcel although not according to the data immediately above it and then one is a true cell or true femcel there's also a tab for male experience again there's no there's no female experience part of the idea of the incel red pill thing is that women just inherently have it easier because women are perceived more attractive than men or because men don't have as high standards. Something like that. So let's have a look at the chart. I'm going to skip the men because we're here to look at women's faces today and because we've seen the men fairly often. So at 10, which is fascinating to me, and I will tell you why, we've got a picture of the lovely 
Emma Watson. I adore her. I think she's gorgeous. She posted a series of photos for her 33rd birthday recently on Instagram. Utterly stunning. She is a very beautiful woman, according to this chart and me being a gay. <laughs> Perfectly conventionally attractive. It is impossible to fail at life. Everything from just the word attractiveness to the entirety of incel rhetoric, it's all subjective. Failure is subjective. Failing at life is very subjective. What does that mean strictly? How do you measure that? We could look at someone like Marilyn Monroe, whose life tragically ended fairly young. Would we say that is counter to this because her life ended young? Or would we say, no, she succeeded at life anyway because she achieved certain things? You know what I mean? It's just so subjective, you can't, you can't argue with it because you can't measure it. <laughs> this is the problem I've had with incel stuff, like, all along. I'm not gonna know who most of these people are, so I apologise. I don't know who the next one is. Might be Megan Fox? It's a really small picture. Number nine, you're still on easy street, but it will take you longer to get scouted than a ten. Oh, I see. Sorry, I skipped this. The first one, if you become homeless, a modelling scout will scoop you up in under a day. That doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> the pictures they're using are, like, people wearing makeup and posing, like, photo shoot red carpet photos, and that's not what you look like when you're homeless, and also there aren't just modelling scouts walking around every town. That's a bit bizarre, but whatever. Um, it will take you longer to get scouted than a 10. Anyone considers you to be beautiful and sexy. Anyone. Just all people. Oh yeah, this is what I was going to say. It's interesting because Emma Watson recently has been one of the um, targets of transvestigators who have explained how actually she's very masculine looking, which uh, is sort of contrary to the um, attractiveness standards of incel red pill rhetoric. Um, so I think it's really interesting that she's here as the 10, because clearly that demonstrates that it is subjective. Eight, you're very attractive, you'll constantly be bombarded by thirsty men. Men will spend their entire life savings to keep you in a relationship with them. That is a really shallow relationship. Some people want a specific type of relationship, and if that works for you, that is great. That is not for me, and I don't think that is the case for most people. <clears throat> Seven, your sexual rejection rate is 4%. Citation needed. <laughs> Your sexual rejection rate is 4%. Unless you are a prude, you will have at least 20 sexual partners before marrying. 20. This is like the incel math where it's like, uh, women have 900 sexual partners a year or some, you know, like crazy statistics. Uh, I assume I'm below a 7 because I haven't had that many sexual partners. 6. People call you pretty and cute. You can use your charm and above average looks to cheese your way through a career. This is also kind of uh, a common a common thread in the incel rhetoric, which is that women are lazy, women don't work as hard because they don't have to work as hard because they can let their looks uh, carry them through life. And again, that probably is the case in some circumstances, that probably is the case with men in some circumstances, maybe there is an inherent bias. I mean, you can, it's difficult because there are factors that sort of tie into attractiveness in terms of like racial bias and stuff. You know, if, um, if there's a culture of racism and we know certain jobs uh, tend to employ a majority of white people, then an incel could make an argument that it was an attractiveness, you know, choice, that it was the, the whiteness of a person that made them, uh, and there is a racist sort of rhetoric in a lot of incel ideology, um, you could sort of vaguely argue that that was an attractiveness thing, or if a, um, a workplace is particularly skewed by gender, you could kind of make the argument that it's an attractiveness thing, but really it's other cultural factors. So the idea is that any woman above, any woman a six or above, uh, doesn't really need to work, she can use her face <laughs> to charm her way up a career ladder, I guess. Five, perfectly average. You're not ugly, but you aren't beautiful. You will be pursued by male fives, but will reject them in favour of a chance of an eight or a nine. We've talked about studies that suggest that people are uh, often attracted to people who are similar genetically to ourselves, so if you were going to try and put that into a rating system, that would mean that people are more likely to date within their numbers. Four. The text gets very small here. Fours are at just the right level to get with any level five, six or seven male. As a result, Fours can have dozens of sexual partners. These women ride the proverbial cock carousel 
<laughs> and settle with the male vibes. I've heard this explained to me, so maybe I'm a four. Maybe on the incel scale I would be around a four because I've been told that I am riding the... Which again, based on incel numbers, I, I don't think I, I've not... I don't think I've been on the carousel. <laughs> <laughs> whatever and then this idea of settling which yeah lots of people do that for various reasons financial um societal pressure to settle down to have children three the lowest you will date is a four you may even get with a six <laughs> either way you're not ugly enough to have a limited amount of potential partners two marries a desperate four or five male has had two to eight sexual partners before the age of 30 maybe i'm a two it's funny because the the ideal woman to them is a virgin that's a whole thing i i've said this before 100 percent think that is down to uh, vulnerability and insecurity about sexual performance i think a lot of the sort of incel males want a virgin woman and will come up with all these reasons why it's better but the reality is because they won't judge me i don't have to fear being judged for not having any sexual experience that's actually what that is so yeah even down at a two on the scale of women two to eight sexual sexual partners before the age of 30 but yeah the ideal woman who is obviously attractive is also a virgin which kind of messes the scale up in a sort of interesting way and one like male ones you are conventionally hideous much like male ones male sixes will pity date you Male fours will go for you because they have lost hope. So per the chart, fem cells aren't a thing. Per this attractiveness scale, there are no female incels or there shouldn't be because there are always men who will date you of a higher tier. It's just the men at the bottom, the, the true incels, or true cells, if you will, who are completely hopeless. If you've ever seen these conversations on incel forums, again, most of these are gone now, which is really great, but if you've ever seen conversations around this chart or rating in general, they will argue and uh, and say, actually, no, this, th th this one should be like a six and this one should be... Basically, as soon as they start talking about it, they prove that it's subjective. <laughs> that is the scale according to incels. So I'm still... I'm still trying to work out part of my goal. Oh. I forgot what i just completely went brain dead for a second there and forgot windows shortcuts i forgot all my windows shortcuts i was trying to open a folder and i couldn't do it oh my god i blame allergies <clears throat> does being a turd brain affect your rating on the scale because i think that might lose me a few points um yeah part of my sort of silly background goal here is to be like well what's my rating what's my attractiveness scale because and this is something that actually i found kind of empowering as a woman on on youtube and social media or with any kind of vaguely public presence uh which is that you cannot win how you look or whatever because i get extremely thirsty comments i also get people who think i'm horrendously ugly and and wouldn't touch me with a 10-foot barge pole again it just proves the subjectiveness of of attraction so i think it'll be interesting to get a a rating to see where i fall on this scale uh technically just as a way to kind of prove that that doesn't measure up to real life or people's attraction to other people um so somewhere in here i've got some uh some records from my time amongst the incels there was a there was a time when uh i became a meme briefly or somebody tried to make me a meme it didn't take off because the memes weren't very good <laughs> here we go there's a couple of the memes of me for uh, entertainment value i quite like this one yikes moment actually that's sort of vaguely similar makeup to what i've got now yikes let's unpack this i thought i look cute there that was actually me dressing as my animal crossing character and they've cropped out my animal crossing character which i think is really rude because i looked just like it and there's another one with this picture that says first fix your personality in cell <laughs> I just want to show you how varied these are. Okay, so this one called me a roasty. A roasty <laughs> is um, supposedly an older lady. I don't know, I was like in my early 20s at that point, whatever. Um, but a woman who has had a lot of sex, allegedly that changes her vagina dramatically. And so that's what that implies. And, and now she's no longer so sexually attractive because she's had too much sex. Even though the higher on the scale they were, the more sex they had allegedly have. So well, I don't, I don't know. So that's one calling me essentially a used-up old bag. So I became an argument in the incel forums over whether or not I was trans. Like I said, the incel forums tended to be also very transphobic, and they couldn't decide. There were people saying, "Well, I'm not going to use the ableist language that they use," but there were people saying, "You're an idiot if you thought this was a trans person." <laughs> Again, just proves 
it's completely subjective. It's all subjective. And also that's one for the we can always tell transfer crowd. This one said I was an ugly, genetic, trash, useless waste of space. So specifically when they didn't like me, I was lower down the scale. Which almost kind of lends some truth to um, the studies about how the more you know someone, the more you like someone, the more attractive they become. The more these people sort of hated me, the more I um, challenged their views, the uglier I was, right? So there we go, that's uh, that's me and the incels. <laughs> Here we have this website, it's called Pretty Scale. I am going to highlight the disclaimer on screen and say, don't use it probably don't use it. I'm just trying to kind of prove a point here that this doesn't work. <laughs> Please do not start if you have low self-esteem or confidence issues. Yeah, do, do, don't, don't do it. Um, analyze your face in three minutes and the guy on the right looks suspiciously like the kind of giga chad that we've seen so far. So that kind of, mm, kind of makes me uh, incel suspicious. Select gender. Only, only two genders. Everything is binary. The results of this test can be unexpected and unreliable. Please don't take the test if you have confidence issues. Um, sure, take a picture. Yeah, go on. Do I need to take, maybe I need to take my glasses off. I'm gonna have weird spots over my eyes then. Is it like a passport photo? Was I not supposed to smile? I'm not really sure how to do this. I think that's right. My head's very small according to the uh, layout, but whatever. I already knew that. Adjust your face in the oval. Oh, okay. That's the best I can do. And my head is the wrong size, according to this. That doesn't bode well. <laughs> I do struggle with hats. Most hats are too big for me. Put the arrow at the outer right eye. Okay, yep. Outer left eye. My eyes wonky. Maybe this was a mistake. <laughs> I laughed and moved the arrow. Oh god. That at the cor yep, yep. I have no idea what they're using to measure, but I assume it's completely arbitrary. The ear. Look how far in that was. My head's the wrong size. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Ooh, um, I think that's my forehead. Maybe I should have brushed my hair back. <laughs> I don't want to get inaccurate results. The middle of mouth is there. I already know that my bottom lip is much bigger than my top lip. I think that's fairly normal. Rightmost point on the mouth. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have smiled. 65%. So I guess that would be a, a 6.5. Normal forehead size. Good interlocular distance, wide mouth, chin too small. My chin is pretty small, actually. Good face symmetry. Then it turned out the symmetry was unattractive. I'm going to have to double check now. Because um, if you make a face perfectly symmetrical, then it looks really fucking weird. Contrary to what was predicted, faces that were more symmetrical were perceived as being less attractive. Nature and design have proven that wonky objects can have more charm, power, and adaptability than their mirrored neighbours. What's unique is often what's attractive, I think. So according to that arbitrary website, most of the words in terms of uh, spaces between the eyes and, you know, most of the sort of measurements were um, congruent. I'm struggling today. My eyes are so sore. I really, I blame hay fever for everything. You're not allowed to criticise me today. It's the pollen. It's not my fault. The measurement system on that bizarre website uh, is congruent with what I've seen on the incel forums in terms of measuring attractiveness uh, of your face. Obviously, this doesn't take body into account, which I assume is a thing given that incels are also, uh, they have historically been obsessed with things like height and the, the broadness of shoulders, things like that. Uh, so it, this is just facial. Um, so according to that, I'm between a six and a seven. It's the sort of thing where you would round down. I think this is the sort of thing where you would probably round down. So we'll say a six. People call you pretty and cute. People do say I'm cute but then I am adorably childish. So that might be an influencing factor. You can use your charm and above average looks to cheese your way through a career. If we compare that to the comments I received from incels who adhere to this kind of rating system, we see something with quite a stark difference. We see people calling me a roasty, subhuman, genetic failure, both clearly trans and clearly cis. The long and short of that kind of proves that studies will, on average, replicate the cultural norms, what is conventionally attractive culturally. 
from person to person on an individual basis, attractiveness is subjective. It depends a lot on how much you like a person. The negative comments I tend to get about how I look are from people who don't like what I have to say. It's not really about how you look, it's about how a person perceives you. That affects what you take in when you see someone. Likewise, when you get to know somebody, they tend to become more attractive to you. Which is a long-winded way of saying that scaling attractiveness, measuring yourself by some kind of objective system simply doesn't work, and that while this is the the thing that incels hated the most that I used to say, the, well, the, most, the thing they hated the most is when I mentioned the word love, because that is just crazy fantasy nonsense. I guess most of them have never loved a family member or, or a dog. The second most hated thing that I used to say is that um, being a likeable person, you don't have to be likeable to everyone, no fucking way, but being likeable to a potential partner, being somebody that another person finds fun to be around, finds kind, funny, all those other things that are, you know, just cope according to incel rhetoric, that influences somebody's perceived attractiveness. It just does. Feelings are a factor in attraction. You can boil it down to, like I said earlier, you can boil it down to the numbers if that's how you want to live your life. You cannot escape the external factors. Even when I casually glance at this scale, the people who have smiling faces, who look like they are genuinely smiling, stand out to me more and I find more attractive than the people with the stony looks. Because I like a smiley face. There we go. I'm a, uh, a six. 0.5, I guess. Wait, what was that on the... let me just get the, um, work out what that was called. A Becky. I'm a Becky. According to this scale, I am a Becky. According to incels, I am all over the spectrum based on whether or not they like what I had to say. I hope you found this video entertaining. I hope it had the effect I wanted, which is to kind of prove how sort of arbitrary things like rating scales and systems in terms of attractiveness are. If you are just on dating apps, looking for hookups, whatever, you can probably find a way to rate your chances based on some sort of scale like this, based on what is uh, culturally popular right now. But otherwise, your perceived attractiveness, according to someone on the internet who made a chart, it's irrelevant. It really, really is irrelevant, and everybody feels lonely. Do leave your thoughts down below if you enjoyed this video. Give it a cheeky little like, subscribe if you haven't already. If you would like comment priority and some cheeky little emotes of my uh, tier 6 face. <laughs> I wonder if my tier goes down on the one where I have a moustache. Uh, you can become a channel member to get access to those. I have a gaming channel, Little Duck Gaming, where we play lots of fun stuff. I have a behind the scenes and kind of vlogging lifestyle channel, Emathon Extra, where you can just see more of me being a silly little bean. I also stream live on Twitch at least three times a week. I've been stepping up my streaming game recently. I'm having so much fun with it. You can find me there at Emma Little Duck. The best way to support this channel if you enjoy what I do is to check out the Patreon. And on that note, I must give a big... Sh it's really hard for me not to say thank you. A big shout out and a thank you. Yes, <laughs> nailed it. To my colossal quackers and giant chickens over on Patreon. <laughs>